In today's session, you will learn how you can increase your impact with Asana and about Asana special pricing and programs for nonprofits. Presenter Mark Arnold will show real life examples of how Asana can support critical functions with nonprofits, as well as give advice on how to improve your, your use of Asana. And with that, I would like to introduce Mark. Mark Arnoldi is the nonprofit growth and partnerships lead at Asana, where he's building Asana's go to market vertical to support nonprofit organizations across the world. Prior to joining Asana, Mark used Asana from 2011 to 2018 to build a global health nonprofit possible as the founding CEO. Mark, the stage is yours. All right. Thank you so much, Steffi, and it's a privilege to be here. Uh, I'm very excited to see all the interest in Asana in the chat and saw a lot of representation from my hometown of Kansas City, Missouri as well. So really looking forward to sharing with you all how Asana can support you all uh, to grow your impact at your own nonprofit. So what I'm going to do is first share my screen here. And today will be very interactive. I am going to start in the slide deck but um, we will quickly move out of the slide deck and actually get into Asana. And I've designed a demonstration for you to show you what it looks like in a real life scenario, how you actually could use Asana to build storytelling for your own organ. So by way of background, my name is Mark Arnoldi and Steffi mentioned prior to coming to Asana, I actually built and ran a global healthcare nonprofit for eight years. And I did that using Asana from day one. So I'm gonna share a little bit more about that story in a second. Um, but as we get into the session today, I wanted to give you an overview of what we're gonna cover. First, I just wanna tell you a little bit about my story because I've been in your seat. I've been looking for a solution to make my nonprofit more effective and save time and increase our impact and went through an eight year journey with Asana. So I just wanna share a little bit about what that was like. That will be brief. Give you an overview of our special offerings that we have for nonprofits. And then the bulk of our time together is actually gonna be getting into our product um, and you'll see Asana in action. So I've developed a template to show you how you can really tell stories effectively and gather stories from across your organization, even potentially from your beneficiaries and able to tell the best stories possible to advance your mission. And then lastly, um, we'll just show you how to kind of move through um, and set up Asana for yourself if you choose to do that. We are also gonna have quite a bit of time for Q&A, so please do go ahead and throw in questions as we go through this. And our partners at TechSoup will organize those questions and I look forward to answering them for you. So first, I wanted to take you to the other side of the world. So about 10 years ago, I stumbled into Nepal. I was en route to China doing some education work during the summer as a college student and a friend of a friend invited me to Nepal. And I found my way out to the far Western part of the country where a small group of medical students, residents, public health students had sort of started figuring out a little bit of something around how to support the healthcare system there. They discovered this 30 year old abandoned public sector hospital. It was the only healthcare facility in the region of over a quarter million people. And I was young and a bit naive, but I couldn't turn away from the need that we saw in this community. And so I decided to join up with that group of people and start a nonprofit organization that ultimately built a public private partnership to deliver high quality, low cost healthcare in some of the poorest regions of the world. My story with Asana, however, is that I started using Asana pretty much on day one. I was starting out as a volunteer and I worked in the basement of a convent in South Boston in Dorchester. I signed up for Asana pretty much to just use it as an individual task list to make sure that I was able um, to manage my own work as I took on a leadership role. We brought on more volunteers. I onboarded them using Asana. And long story short, over the course of eight years, we really used Asana to do everything you possibly could. We grew our team to 350 people. We had fundraising initiatives all over the world. And Asana was a real core part of our success. And in fact, it enabled us to turn this 30 year old public sector hospital into a beautiful brand new uh, $4.5 million teaching hospital, the first of its kind in all of rural Nepal. And I really feel strongly, and this, and this is absolutely true, that we wouldn't have had this success without Asana. When I chose to leave the organization, I wrote a letter to my board of directors and I told them that choosing Asana and sort of 
centralizing all of the work of the organization on one tool was one of the top three best decisions I ever made when I was running the organization. And so obviously it was a privilege to do this work and I really love my colleagues and, and miss this work to a certain extent, but now I'm in a position where I'm able to support all the wonderful work that you all are doing. And I hope you have a very similar journey to me. What I found valuable about Asana in closing out this story is that it really allowed us to consolidate a very, very limited technology budget onto one tool. We figured out uh, clever ways to bring in all of the essential functions to Asana. So that included things like using it as a CRM when we only had a small donor base, tracking logistics for patients that we had to refer from this rural area of Nepal to Kathmandu, developing uh, grant proposals and a template to complete grant proposals with greater efficiency, and all of our internal communications, right? So a frontline nurse in Nepal could be on their phone, log in, see a staff post about a recent grant we won, or a visitor that's coming to the hospital soon, or that the prime minister mentioned us in the Nepali paper, right? It really helped with that central engagement too. So what I loved about it is it allowed us to centralize our technology spend, which was very limited. We were a small budget organization growing fast. And also it allowed us to reduce the amount of training and enablement we had to do for all these other softwares. Because every time we figured out how to move something into Asana, like tracking applicants for recruitment or using it as a CRM, that meant it was one fewer tool we had to train up a big staff on. So that was my journey with Asana. It's why I came over. Uh, it's why I do the work I do now. Part of our Asana for nonprofits uh, team. And our mission for Asana for Nonprofits is to accelerate nonprofit sector impact with our people, product, and services. To date, just to give you a sense of scale and partnering with TechSoup, over 4,000 nonprofits in more than 80 countries have increased their impact using Asana. And before we go into the product, I just wanted to spend a little bit more time talking about what specifically we do that's unique and special for nonprofits. I do want to say I'm really proud that Asana has invested in building a nonprofit team. It's the first team that we've chosen to specialize in as our company's grown. And there are really three key components to what we do. So first and foremost, we want to get Asana in the hands of all of the nonprofits who want it. And so we want to make sure that they can afford it. So we offer 50% off to all eligible, eligible nonprofits. And that starts for plans as few as two seats. So you may be like me, you know, over a decade ago, the first volunteer with a couple of friends, you can get started. Uh, and you can also use Asana if you're a multi-thousand uh, person federated non -profit. So first what we do is offer really, uh, you know, uh, a discount that we believe allows most nonprofits in the world to get on board. Second, and this is a really key distinctive part of what we offer, we have an entire team of specialists. People who come from the nonprofit sector chosen to be in this part of the company in order to support organizations like you. And we have it set up in such a way that we can support um, organizations at all sizes. So we have an internal program called Asana Advisors that allows us to support even the smallest nonprofits because those are Asana employees who have volunteered to receive special training, who get on coaching calls and support some of the smallest nonprofits um, we, we are able to partner with. We have onboarding specialists who offer free onboarding um, if you purchase this on a, above a certain size. We have customer success managers who will actually be part of your, your team, really. They will start to feel like an internal consult and make sure um, that you're getting all the training and resources you need and teach you how to use the tool more effectively over time, like in a long-term relationship. And we also have professional services. So if you have a larger team or you have a complex rollout of Asana, we're actually able to offer a dedicated consultant you know, who spends around 100 hours for a fixed fee in this case, but that's also discounted for nonprofits to get you on board fast. Lastly, we really do have best-in-class self-serve resources. So some people just prefer to learn on their own or when they get stuck, they want to be able to Google something quickly and figure it out. So we have a few different resources on that front. We have the Sauna Academy, which is actually an online uh, curriculum with short courses. We have Asana Guide, which is not listed here, but is like the Wikipedia for all of Asana. Weekly webinars hosted by our customers, like our actual customer experts who are called certified pros who come from the nonprofit sector. We have special templates designed for nonprofits. And we have something called the Asana Together World Tour, which pretty much guarantees we're going to have an event somewhere near your city in any given year. And you can bring your team to that and get onboarding and training. So this is really uh, what we offer in terms of our Asana for Nonprofits program. So 
But bouncing back to our outline, I wanted to ensure um, that we're going to be spending most of the time today just really seeing Asana in action. So I'm going to take a quick peek and make sure everything's going okay here in Airmeet. Looks like it is. And I'm going to bring you into the product. So I know we have varying levels of experience with Asana today in terms of all of you who have joined. So um, some of this will be too basic and maybe some of it will be too advanced. I'm going to try to try to hit the middle ground and, and give you both some basic understanding of how Asana works and a little more advanced usage. So hopefully it appeals and has benefit for all of you. First and foremost, this is just a, a demo space. So this is not a real organization. There's no uh, data being leaked here. This is not one of our nonprofit customers. Uh, what I want to do is just spend uh, a couple minutes orienting you to the basics of Asana, and then we're actually going to go in and build a project together related to storytelling for nonprofits. So first things first, this is your homepage in Asana. And just to give you some orientation, you know, if you join us on it, you'll be able to access your profile up here. This is where you can change some of your settings and, and do things like that. You'll be able to see your organization's logo. You're able to do this custom branding in the tool. This is what we call an Omni button, which basically just means you, if you ever get confused and you need to create something in Asana, you can just hit this button because you can hit it. You can create a task, a project, you can message your colleagues, you can create a team, or you could even invite new team members. You have the search bar for those of you. Um, you know, that are familiar with using advanced search and email. It's kind of like that. Um, Sana can be a phenomenal historical record for you and your, your organization because you never lose anything. Everything gets archived and you're always able to search based on these parameters to find anything that you're looking for. What else you're going to see in this homepage up front is sort of your personal to-do list. That's elevated and prioritized so you can see what's what's on your list, what's coming up, and perhaps even what's overdue. In this case, no overdue task, good job. Um, you're gonna see your projects that you've recently been interacting with. And what's kind of nice is you're also gonna see the folks you collaborate with frequently. So this is just your homepage view. It allows you to jump into a lot of different parts of the product. But if you scroll up to the top left side, you actually can see what we call the sidebar. And the sidebar is sort of like your navigation tool for the rest of the product. So what's great about Asana is it allows you to organize your work at an individual level and make sure that nothing falls through the cracks in terms of things that are assigned to you and work you need to get done personally, but it also allows you to collaborate and get aligned with your team on things like goals, priorities, and complex multi-person projects and workflows. So to give you a brief tour of the individualized spaces, there are two of them. First is my task. This is your modern to-do list. So maybe some people like pen and paper, and I understand that. If you come over to Asana, you're going to have lots more options on, in terms of how to organize this. But think of it as your modern day pen and paper. Everything that's assigned to you in Asana will, be, um, will fall into the space automatically. It allows you to sort those tasks by sections. You can rename any of these sections as you wish. And you also, and we'll get to this much later, but you have an ability to set custom rules for how you want to organize your personal to-do list. So you may want, for example, a task. If you miss the task and it goes past due, you may want Asana to write a comment to you to remind you that the task is past due. You're able to create a rule to do that. Or you may want Asana to bring in all of the tasks that are due within the next week. It can do that as well. So this is your personalized to-do list. Everything in Asana that gets assigned to you will show up here so you don't lose any of the work. The other personalized view is inbox. And inbox is kind of like what it sounds like. It's an inbox. It's designed to replace email at Asana. And with our customers who use Asana across their entire organization, one of the best things about it is there's basically no more email. We don't use internal email at Asana. We only use it for you know quick logistical forwards um, and to send calendar invites. The reason for that is because, of course, we love Asana Inbox. It's a very quick way to filter through all of the work that is relevant to you. So this is work that you may be added on as a collaborator, work that's assigned to you, or work that you've selected that you want to just follow. Without going into too much detail, I just want to let you know you can also filter the inbox. So if you're getting a lot of alerts, you can say, I just want to see the messages that are assigned to me, for example. And as you go through the inbox, the great part about it 
is all of the information that you need to interact with your colleagues, to move the work forward, to ask questions, it's all right here. This is what we call the task pane. So you could click on any one of these items in your inbox, a task pane will pull up. It will show you who the task is assigned to, um, what the due date is, if it belongs to certain projects, right? And in the task description, you're able to write free text and explain to your colleagues. And this is also a space where if you're confused about what's assigned to you, you can write a colleague and say, can you clarify if these dates are a hard due date, for example. So this is where you can have all of the conversation about that task or that unit of work that you need to get done, and you can access it directly from your inbox. So those are your two personalized spaces, my task and inbox. But you know the real power of Asana comes from complex collaboration and getting your entire team aligned around goals and getting them engaged. So the way to do that is actually through projects. So as we move into this next section of the demonstration, I just want to show you real quick the four types of projects that exist in Asana, and then we're going to build something together. So as you start working with colleagues and trying to design more complex work, you have the ability to work through projects. On the left sidebar here, you'll see that you have teams. And I just wanna make sure we're still sharing okay. All right, thank you. We have teams underneath a, a given team, you will actually see projects. So as you think about moving into Asana for your organization, uh, whatever your organization looks like in real life, right? whatever your organizational chart is, whatever those team names are, you would want to set those teams up here. And then the team leads or members of that team, as they create projects, they would create projects in that team. A real nice benefit of Asana is you can create an all staff team. So when you need to message the entire team, share good news, make a staff post about an important update, you can do that within a staff team. But for our time today, just so we can keep moving along, I'm just going to show you three different views of Asana as you start doing uh, work and collaborating with your team. Every single project in Asana can be seen in four different views. So it can really match your work preferences and your needs based on the project itself. So you can view a project as a list, which is this, a board, which I'll show you next, a timeline, which is like a Gantt chart or a calendar. So this is, when you view a project or design a project as a list, it's a really powerful you know, project management view. It allows you to think about how you want to design uh, something from top to bottom or from start to finish. You're able to add sections. You can open and close these sections. You're able to add tasks, assign tasks, give them due dates. And you can think of the rest of the Asana space over here. It's kind of like easier to use, a more attractive spreadsheet. So any column you want to add, you can do that very easily by just hitting this button and adding that column here. So this kind of project, the list view, is kind of the original view. It's, the, it's a view that's good for time-bound projects, action-oriented projects that all sort of, you're all moving towards the same end goal together as a team. The second type of project I wanted to show you that exists is a board. So this is, a, you know, given we're talking about storytelling, I wanted to show an example for, you know, in the creative field and creative production. A lot of times in the creative realm, people want to be able to see the visual asset. You can't see that very well in the list view. So you can look at it in this board view. This is like a Kanban board. Some people just prefer to work this way. The other advantage is you actually can see visual assets um, without having to click into the task. But this all has the same exact task pane information that you would see in any project type. It just allows you to present it as a visual board. And so in this case, you know, in this visual board, you can easily drag and drop items between columns. Something was assigned. You can drag it here to note that it's now active. It's in, it's in process. It's now going through a quality assurance review or getting feedback. And now it's complete. And you can mark that task complete right there. So that's the board view. Then lastly, going to open up just one, one more project. I know we're talking about storytelling as part of this conference, and it's really, really essential to have campaign calendars, editorial calendars, to get an entire team aligned on when work is happening across the year. So we also have the ability to show all projects in a calendar view, which is what you're seeing here. 
Again, if you click on a task, the task pane is exactly the same. It's just a different way of presenting the information. Lastly, one of my favorite views for thinking about complex timelines when there's dependencies um, or you're worried that you know, a blocker may destroy um, the progress or, or move back to timeline is what we call timeline view. Think of this as an easy use interactive Gantt chart. And what timeline allows you to do is visualize the work that's getting done over time. You are able to zoom in and out. If you wanna see it over the course of months instead of the course of weeks, you can do that. And a great piece about this is let's say in this case, you're making a new hire highlight, you're trying to produce that and send it out over social media. If that work gets delayed, these two tasks are not able to be completed. So this line drawn between the two indicates a dependency. And what happens if this task gets delayed, you change the due dates, you'll see that the dependent tasks auto shift as well to allow for that buffer to be created and for this work to stay on track and not be blocked by this. So to recap, before we go into the actual um, project and build something together, projects are where you get work done as a team. You have your pick to see projects as a list, as a board, as a calendar, or as a timeline. And within any given project, you can switch between those. So now what I wanna do is take a breath and actually talk about the topic of the conference and show you a real life example, to kind of take you on a journey about how you could use a template, a list view project and some rules to save yourself a lot of time and to share the stories of your beneficiaries with your funders and with your broader audience. So for the purposes of this example, I want you to just imagine that we're representing a climate change uh, focused nonprofit and the challenge that's being faced right now is there's all these fantastic stories from the field, from photographers, from journalists, from scientists, but there's no centralized way to capture those stories, assign them out, track uh, how they've performed over time. And so, you know, you, let's say as a design manager or a creative manager or marketing manager are tasked with figuring that out. Well, what I would recommend doing doing, and you can set up this project and save it as a template, I'd recommend thinking about a building an intake project. This is one of the most valuable types of projects nonprofits can use to save time. So we're all on the same page as we go through this, the sort of pain points and the need that's been identified for this climate change organization is that you need to be able to capture story proposals from everywhere, from the field, not just from your direct marketing team. Someone needs to be able to triage those stories and review them, assign out approvals to make sure you know that your standards have been met before this content goes out into the public sphere, and then assign that out. So this is what we're gonna design a project to do, and I'll show you how to do that in just a few easy steps. So imagine that this is pretty much a blank project. You come in here, um, and given that these are our goals, you wanna think about how to design sections to meet those goals. So somehow you wanna capture some information, you wanna capture proposals from your team, um, you wanna be able to organize those proposals. So let's create a section where when they're submitted, they will fit in this section. Then you're gonna need a section for when they get approved. Um, you're gonna need a section to assign out sharing and you're gonna need a section in order to record just a history of shared stories, right? So that's how you use the sections to give your project basic organization. You could just go ahead and add a task here. Someone could come in, they could say a story about flooding in China. They could open up a task, they could fill out information. However, that's not very useful for you as the marketing manager or the team member who's overseeing this project because they can just fill out whatever they want here, right? They could, uh, there's no rules, there's no guidance, there's no organization to how they would do that. So what we actually wanna do in an intake project is use a form. So an Asana form allows you to be in control. <laughs> it allows you to customize a form however you'd like to set up questions and ensure that when you use this form, your colleagues are going to be submitting information in a consistent way which is gonna save a lot of time and make sure you get a high quality story out into the world. So for example, you could say, what is your role? You could make that a required project and you can continue to do this and you can customize this form, use a variety of different methods. This is a drop down method, for example, what region is this story from? 
you can customize this in, in any way you want. For example, to save time, I just wanted to show you the preview of the form. I'm gonna go back to the list view and I'm gonna show you just a couple other features of a really good project. And then we're gonna move into a slightly more mature version of this form and wrap up by showing you how it works in practice. So we've talked about sections, which kind of give you that high level organization. We've talked about designing a form that you can send out to your colleagues so you can capture information that can come into this project in a consistent way. But there's also probably some other data points that you'd like to have in this project. Right now, you're just gonna be able to see who is assigned the work when it's due. But let's say this climate change organization actually works across Asia, Asia, Asia and multiple different countries. You may want to have create a field or a column for country. And your primary countries are, let's say, China, India, and Nepal. Very, very important part of the world for climate change work. You can create that field. And so now in the future, as stories come in, you'll be able to assign uh, a country label to that story. And I'll show you how that works in just a, just a second. The last piece involved here, so you're gonna customize a little bit with your columns. Then last, you have an ability to add some other really nice components to this project to save you time. And we have a feature that's called rules. Just think of it as kind of like a bot that is or an automation robot that's working on your behalf and you're able to build custom rules. So if we go back to the pain points here real quick, you know, you're trying to figure out how to capture stories, proposals for those, review them, approve them and assign them out. So let's just look at what one simple rule could look like as part of this. You could say that when a task is added, we want to assign for review. So you're able to choose a trigger. It's kind of like a if this, then that type of motion. So you have triggers and you have actions. So you could say when a task is added to this project, I want it to be assigned to my colleague, Moses, and I want the, there to be a comment to Moses that says, please review this submission within 48 hours and mark for say, approval if you think it's ready. So you can create that rule and automatically every time a, a task comes into this project, you it will be assigned to Moses and it will send a comment to Moses to tell him and just remind him to review this proposal and mark it for approval in 48 hours. That's another really nice component of a really great sort of high efficiency project. So you've got sections, You've got custom fields or columns that you're designing. You're adding some rules to save the project manager time, and you're creating a form to create some consistency in terms of how the information comes into this project. So because I didn't wanna walk through every single step, we're gonna leapfrog forward to look, what, look at what the final version of this project looks like. And this is where we're gonna wrap up today before we go to Q&A. So this is um, the same concept. It's a intake project. I just built it out a little bit further to save us some time. So same goals, same section headers here. I did go ahead and add a few different uh, columns. So we had country in our working draft. In this case, also added a column called channel. Channel will allow you to indicate if you want this story to be part of a donor report, social media, blog, website, put in popular press, whatever is relevant. Right. Also added a custom field here. So maybe the rules don't work perfectly or something happens. You just want to be able to know, you know, is this thing still needing review? Is it approved or has it been published? That allows you to see that at a glance here. The other thing I did that I just want to show you real quick is I built out a few extra rules. And so what I did is I set up a rule that if a task is added to the project, you want to assign it to Jamie, who is me in this hypothetical demonstration, and you want to move it to a section called Submitted Stories for Review. Added a second task that says, once the status changes to Approved, you want to add a comment, assign it to your colleague Tiffany, and wait for her to um, assign it to be published. And then lastly, 
uh, a rule that says, if a task is marked complete in this project, move it to the record of published stories and you know, gray it out, show that it's a complete task. So this is a really nice setup to get proposals in, have it immediately assigned, have someone responsible for triaging it, move it through an approval, get it to assign to your right team, whether it's social media, the blog, the website, and then store a history of all of your, your proposals that you've pushed through the organization. So I wanna show you what this looks like in real life. This is the final step. So this is what a form looks like where I invested a little bit more time and built out all of the uh, questions. Again, you can customize all of this. These are all of your options in terms of the type of form you wanna create. You can give space to add an attachment, which I've done here, because what are good stories without visuals, right? Let people indicate if they want to respond. For example, this one is optional, whereas the location of the story, the country is not optional, that's required. You have a lot of space to design this to meet your needs. And when you wanna share that form, all you have to do is copy the link and you could share it in an Asana task, in an email, in a chat with your colleagues so that they know in the future, if they are capturing a story from the field and they want the marketing team to do something with it, this is how they make that submission. So in this case, we'll just run through real quick. We'll say that, you know, my name is Kevin. I'm a climate photographer. And we'll look at this as the cost of climate change in Nepal. Obviously the story is from Nepal. I'm gonna say, I want this story to be used in a donor report. I'm going to actually attach a picture that I, Kevin, the photographer took in Nepal of a receding glacier. And then I wrote this um, in advance just to save us some time here too. I'm gonna to share some nuggets about what I want this story to say, right? So I'm telling the marketing team that I want our funders to see the stark before and after photos of a glacier that's receded dramatically in my own lifetime, right? I took this photo, this is a community I belong to as a Peace Corps volunteer. It might be good for popular press. I let the team know that there are human interest angles here too, along with photographs of people I've met. But most important, I'm trying to convey that you know, Nepal's the rooftop of the world. This water source is the water source for 2 billion people. And I wanna use my photography to sound the alarm and create a call to action for our partners to, to focus on carbon reduction. So I submit this form. And you'll see that come into the project here and you'll see all of these um, rules at work. So this is the task after the form was submitted, it came into the project, it was automatically assigned per the rule. You can open this up, you can review the content right here that was submitted from the form. And it was assigned to me because my job is to determine if it's ready for approval or not. I'm gonna say in this case, that it looks like a really important timely topic. So I'm gonna jump in, mark it as approved, and you will see the rule work again down here. It will now move into the approved section and reassign the task to Tiffany. Because Tiffany's like the master storyteller. It, it, you know, it has, kind of has to go through her as the final review for her to assign it out to the right um, publishing group. So in this case, it's been assigned to Tiffany and Tiffany can actually write Kevin and say, this is great, but I want to know more about the, the human interest angle. Let's set up a quick Zoom and I, I can add notes to bring this to final, right? So be able to do that. And even within the task itself, you can add a Zoom meeting right here, assign it to Kevin, hop on a 20, 30 minute Zoom, do an interview to really flesh out this content and get it to final. Once that's done, Tiffany can assign this to a different team member to publish. She can assign it to Chris and say, at hey, Chris, this is ready to publish in our next annual report, right? So she can do that, move it, you can move it by either dragging and dropping it, or you can actually move the sections here. So once Chris gets that, he's gonna publish it in the annual report, mark it complete, and that brings us full cycle to where that task will now move down into your record of published stories. All right, I know that was a lot, but I thought it was really important to show you kind of the power of 
how a project like this can save you all a lot of time and keep your work organized and help you um, get the stories of your beneficiaries out into the world. To close out, um, I just wanna finish with this slide here. And if this is interesting to you, you're interested after the Q&A, I just wanted to make sure you knew how to start with Asana. It's very simple. We partner with TechSoup on this and we're grateful for their partnership. All you have to do is go to asana.com backslash nonprofit. Just confirm that your nonprofit is in fact eligible. You'll receive a code and then you can buy the best plan for you online. What that looks like in practice is going to this website, clicking on this button to see how it works. You can choose the country that you're applying from on behalf of your nonprofit. You click get started and that will take you to the TechSoup page where you can make the purchase and receive the coupon code. If you do end up having any questions about that, you have the ability here to reach out to our team here at Asana with any questions. And now you might be familiar with what this looks like. It's an Asana form and that goes to our nonprofit team here at Asana so we can address any questions that you have. All right. Well, with that, I am going to bring it to a close and pass it over to Steffi, our host, to help manage questions. Thank you, Mark. This was great. Really, really helpful stuff. I really, really liked that you uh, spent so much time on the intake form. I, I have used that feature before, not with uh, all the extra functionalities that you just explained. So I, that was really great to learn more about that. And our attendees actually have a lot of questions. So I'm going to head over to the Q&A section. And I'm going to start with this one here from Mackenzie. She's asking, could you provide us with an example regarding using Asana for social media content planning or calendar? I will say it's onset. We use Asana for this very purpose. We have a social media team. They use Asana to do that. I actually can't show you our space, um, unfortunately, but I can show you probably within the demo space. Steffi, would it be okay if I take it back over real quick, the share screen? Okay. Let me pop back into the demo space and see if we have a social media example in here. So I'll use the search function to see what projects come up. So this one is called social media properties. This is probably not what you're looking for, but it's a good reminder and I'll jump into a different project to show you. It's a good reminder that Asana can be used for action oriented projects like traditional project management to move something from start to finish. It also can be used like a wiki. So this is just an information storage project. You're not gonna assign this task to someone. You're not gonna give it a due date. It's just a place to say, here are all of the Twitter accounts that belong to our organization. Here are the Facebook accounts, et cetera. So this is just a surprise. I don't always know what's in our demo space. So I was hoping this would be a calendar, but you know, it's a good reminder that you can use this on a, almost like a wiki. So I think the best um, version to show you and answer that question would be our editorial calendar. So instead you could just imagine that this is in fact social media posts. A great way to design this is um, to use the calendar function itself, but sometimes you need to see further out and this can be a little bit difficult. So you might just wanna switch into the list view function and have your tasks more visible here. So what I would say is that this works very, very good for social media because you can map out your planned dates of posting based on when you get the highest engagement traditionally, if you're looking at your data, you can bring in the draft copy of the post. You can indicate with a custom field over here where you want to post that, that example. So it could be Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, et cetera. And then you can assign it for approval, right, to the manager for the social media team. And from there, you can assign it out to, to be automated to publish within Facebook or Twitter or whatever the case is. So I think that's a great use case. Highly recommend it. We use it a lot here at Asana. Sorry, I didn't have the exact project for you. That was great still. Thank you. All right, next up is this question. We have been using the free platform for a few years. I'm wondering what benefits are including with the upgrade? Sure. Steffi, I'll do share again, just because I think it, it helps if you don't mind. All right, so let me pull up a web page here. Apologies, there's like five clicks every time we need to share. So it just takes a little extra time. <laughs> All right. so. What I wanted to take you to was this page here. It's, it's the asana.com slash pricing page. Keep in mind that all the prices you see here are for our regular customers. So for nonprofits, it's half of what you see here. So 
first. I just want to make that clear. Second, it's a great place. The reason I wanted to show you, it's a great place to compare what you get with each version of Asana. This is kind of the overview section of what you get in the comparisons. And then if you want to go in greater depth, you can just click here and do compare all features. So directly to your question, if you've been using basic, probably the biggest challenge with basic over time is just if your team gets too big for it. You are limited to 15 members on basic. And outside of that, I think the next biggest challenge is you don't get all of the views. So if you're really wanting to use that kind of enhanced Gantt chart version of the feature that we have or view that we have for a project that's called timeline, you can see here that's only in premium, it's not in basic. So some of what I demonstrated there was higher end usage, like using rules and, you know, or proofing or approvals, they just aren't going to be there in premium. But what I would say about premium coming back, or sorry, about basic coming back is it's a phenomenal way to start, right? And I would encourage you all uh, to do that if you just want to get your feet wet and you're not sure, and maybe you want to get started with a small one or two teams on your organization before you go to a paid plan. That's really why I think premium is, is best. But if you are going to try to be automating workflows um, or using some of the higher functionality, you're probably going to need to, to move to premium over time. Thank you. That was super helpful. Sort of tied to this question, I would like to show this one here uh, from Sherry. Sounds like this is for large projects, large mm -hmm. organizations. How can small libraries utilize Asana? Yeah. So I will say Asana works equally well for nonprofits, small and large. And in fact, I would say small organizations have a bit of an advantage because there's less complexity and it's easier to move almost all of your work over to Asana. So, you know, you may not have 15 other tools that you have to migrate out of or move information from in order to get the most out of Asana. So I use Asana, you know, as a team of one, a team of five, a team of 30, all the way up to a team of 350. And I found it equally valuable at every step of the way. And I see that with our customers. So some tips on how to use it for a small library. You know, I would really think about creating a staff team first. And let's say maybe you have 15 to 25 staff members bringing all of your staff members on a staff team and using it to create a space for shared announcements. You know, I think that really helps bring people together. The shared announcements, people will see it in their inbox. They'll get familiar with using inbox. People will start commenting. They'll celebrate each other's achievements, especially in this hybrid or remote work environment now. Some of that basic internal communication is really nice to have. And so you can make it sort of your go-to place for internal communication as a starting point. And then some of the other things I like um, to advocate for, for for small organizations is just move all of your meetings into Asana. Uh, one thing we didn't talk about but is really, really helpful is we have templates. So that project we went through creating, I could save it as a template. And anytime you wanted to have a different kind of intake project, like for technology hardware or for a grant proposal, you could just use that as a template, change a few small things, and it's ready to go. So the same thing is for meetings. So create a meeting for all of your one-on-ones that you might have with your manager or your colleagues. Create a meeting template for your team meetings or your all staff meetings. It will save a lot of time. So I think the advantage of smaller organizations is it's easier to get your entire organization communicating really effectively on Asana. And I would start there more in the communications realm. Great. And uh, just a follow-up question regarding the templates. Can those be found right from the Asana environment or would you have to navigate through the Asana website? Yeah, we can. Can I show my screen real quick? Sure. There were just too many things to show, so I didn't get to the templates. <laughs> I, for, I apologize, but I will show you. It's one of my favorite features. It's one of the biggest time savers for sure. So there are a few different ways to get into a template. So let me explain that. First, let's go back to the project we created. If you wanted to create a custom template, you have the ability to do that in some versions of Asana. And you go up to the project header here, you hit this drop down bar, and you'll see convert to template. So this is really nice because you can see that it will give you the ability to use it as a template. And when you search in the future in your templates library, which I'll show you in just a second, it will show up there. But when you use something as a template, you can uh, rename it. So let's say it's a, you want to use it for a technology intake instead of a storytelling. 
if you want to repurpose it, and you're okay with it being in the staff team, it will actually create the project for you right there. So that's what a template looks like when the template is in action, and it, you can see it's that quick. It's replicated everything for you. The other place to find templates is anytime you're starting a new project. So you start a new project and it gives you the option to, you can import data from a spreadsheet. If you have something you want to move over from a spreadsheet, you can start from blank or you can use a template. Asana gives you a library of recommended templates that you can sort by team over here. And as your team starts using Asana more and saving their custom templates, you will have your own library of custom templates as well. So templates are highly valuable. Couldn't recommend them enough. Absolutely. Great. Thank you so much. That was super helpful. All right. Let's see. A couple questions. So uh, actually a question from me. <laughs> you, you showed uh, previously uh, that you can add a uh, Zoom meeting right in your Asana environment, right? Yeah. So uh, I'm assuming you integrate with uh, Zoom. Do you have other integrations or are there other integrations with uh, tools that specifically nonprofits might use? Yeah. Absolutely. Um, to save you having to switch the share screen, I'll just talk through this one. But if you do Google Asana integrations, you'll be able to, to go to our page to see all of them. But let me just assure you that we uh, integrate, have native integrations with probably most of the important tools nonprofits are using. So if you use uh, the Google suite for email, we have that. If you use the Microsoft suite, we have that. We integrate with Slack, Adobe Creative Cloud, Jira, Salesforce, all of Microsoft Office 365, you know, so whether you're trying to move information from your email into Asana to make it actionable, whether you're trying to have your Asana task show up on your Google, Google Calendar, or you're trying to pull information from your CRM, Salesforce into an Asana project, it has the ability to do all of that. And I know a lot of nonprofits don't have a lot of extra engineering capacity sitting around unused, but we also do have an API. And so if you have an engineering or a web development team, they are able to link up with our API team, use the API to develop custom integrations as well. So yes, we have expansive integration network just because I know like the service and the support around the integrations is so important. We have awesome little like five, 10, 15 minute courses on our Asana Academy that show you how to just do like the three or five most important things with the Google integration, the Microsoft integration, the Slack integration, for example, that you can just use right. yourself. Awesome. That sounds, that sounds absolutely fantastic. Thank you for that. Here's another question from Ronald. How does Asana perform in low bandwidth situation? Yeah. So my experience is really well because that picture I showed you of the hospital in Nepal back in 2008 or so, when I was spending a lot of time there on site, a very, very limited bandwidth. And so over the course of 10 years, of course, it's already got, it's gotten a lot better. I have not heard customer complaints in the last, since I've been at Asana, the last two and a half years on low bandwidth. So that's my personal anecdote. I used to run our customer success team and I never, ever saw a complaint about that. Sure, there is some limit, but Asana does have an ability to store information offline for a period of time as well. So, you know, if you are midstream typing a task description or a comment and the network goes out, it will be saved. You won't have to replicate all of that work. And there's um, some limited offline functionality as well. That's really good to know. Thank you. All right. I think we have time for one more question. Let's see here. A question from Teresa. Does Asana have an educational webinar on using Asana to coordinate grant writing process? Yeah, that's a, that's a great question. So today we do not have a webinar specific to that. We do have webinars focused on broader based usage. So in this case, you know, how to think about designing a template, but not specific to grant writing as the template itself. I will say our nonprofit team, we're small and mighty. We're three, about to be four, as you saw, over 4,000 customers. So we're kind of catching up a little bit and we hope to bring on a marketer that's dedicated to our team to help with opportunities exactly like this. So I can't make a promise around any specific timeline, but this is on our roadmap as a team to do more use case specific webinars for nonprofits. And this would be one of the top ones, top three on the list, grant writing. But because we don't have one, my quick advice outside of that is 
build a really good template and just refine it over time. Build a, like a bare, you know, the minimum viable template, launch it with your team, go through a grant process together, you know, have a 20 minute meeting to reflect on how the template could have been better, update the template, save it again, and just keep doing it like that until it's really customized to how your team works and how your team collaborates on, on putting together grant proposals. Perfect. That's excellent advice. Thank you. All right. I think uh, looking at the time, we're coming up to the end of the session. Thank you, Mark, for all the advice, all the information. It was super, super great to learn about Asana and how to use it if you're a nonprofit. Thank you, everyone, for attending the session and all the great questions in Q&A. To close out the session, I would like to just pop up some closing slides. So if you would like to share uh, what you have learned today, please feel free to do so. We love some social media shout outs. You can use uh, our hashtag NP storytelling and tweet at us at TechSoup. And uh, this session is being recorded. So you can, we will, we will email uh, the recording uh, to you, including the, the slides and also any other educational and uh, resource links that we have shared in the chat. So we will email all the attendees by October 12th with that. And just a quick announcement. This was the last session for today. We will resume tomorrow morning uh, at a.m. Pacific time and 11 uh, AM Eastern time with from projects and smarts to personas and storytelling. So we hope to see you all tomorrow. And if you are also interested in becoming a sponsor like, like Asana, please feel free to send an email to Susan B at her contact info below. And with that, I would like to close. Thanks again, everyone for attending. Thank you, Mark. And I hope you really enjoyed the session and uh, see you all tomorrow.